Today we're going to change out a broken blinker switch on a Ford F-150 2007 model. So come along with us on South Alabama Gals and let's get this switched out for our friend. So the tools you're going to you'll want is to, you'll need a switch. This one's for a 2007 F-150. You'll need one for the model year that you're doing. And then we need a 5.5 and a 7 millimeters for the uh, panels that we're going to take off the screws on the panels and then an eight millimeter to disconnect your battery cables and you'll need some sort of extension you can use a socket or a socket wrench or a driver that's your choice on that uh, whatever works in the in the tight fit that you're needing and I felt like the driver was the best first thing we're going to do is use an eight millimeter with a little socket to, to remove the battery cables disconnect those we're going to start with the negative. There's discussion about which is the right way, but we're going to start with the negative. You want to disconnect those cables so that you don't have power anytime you're handling electrical. There you go. We'll just disconnect those and move on to the next step. All right, once you have the battery terminal disconnected so you don't have power, then you're gonna come right here under this bottom panel and there are two screws. One right here and one right over here that are a seven, a seven millimeter bolt. We're gonna take those off and then there's clips up here. It'll just pull down. We have the two screws out now. And this is actually, you can use the socket or you can use a driver. I think a driver would be much better. I just didn't have one with me. And I'm going to show you how this pops off. So there's two pieces of this. And it just pops like that. You can see you've got a, just a clip here, kind of a wedge-shaped clip. And then there's one on the other side. We're just going to pop those off and get into the next piece. Next piece we're going to tackle is this one right here. You've got a little um, nut right here that we need to take out and then there's some clips to re release it all the way. So this screw is a 5.5 millimeter and then when you come up here you're gonna have another screw that is under this panel right here. There's another screw that's a 5.5. And around on this side of it, there is another screw. There's another screw right here that's also a 5.5. Now if you can lower your extender arm where it'll raise that steering wheel up, you can take this panel off. And what we're trying to do is take it off, take this apart and change it without having to take out the airbag that's inside of here. So if you can do that, that's better. If not, we're just going to work around these pieces so that we don't end up breaking uh, these different brackets that are right here. Thanks, Denise, for holding that on. <laughs> the next piece we want to take out is this back piece. Now, it just has clips in it. And you can see there's clips here, there's clips here, there's clips on the side. And we've, right here is a piece here. I'm just going to push it down and it's got a clip that clips right here on this hole up under here. So once you get that off, then we're going to get this piece off. And you just have to work it free of the steering wheel and then pull this out through the side. Ta-da! Disconnected. You can see these are where it screws in. These are the clips. All right, now we need to take the actual piece off. All right, now that we've got the covers off, we're ready to take this unit out. So you've got two different pieces that are plugged in here and here. And I'll show you here. You can see there's a little clip here. So when you push that clip, 
so I can do it from the side so you can see it. When you push the clip, and then you can pull this out and it releases. Now this one is, on this particular unit, this one's very cramped, possibly because I can't get it to raise, and so it's gonna be difficult to get out, but I'll get that out off camera. And then right over here is a, another nip bolt that we're gonna remove. All right, so we've already removed the 5.5 meter bolt that goes right here. And then, so we and disconnected, so there's a pin right here, if y'all can see that, there's a pin. And we're gonna push that pin in and lift and just lift that unit out. Now there's one more plug down on the bottom that we're gonna need to disconnect. And we'll get to that in just a second. So once you've lifted it up, there is a cord on the back right here. And if you'll just trace that down with your fingers till you find where it goes, and hopefully yours, you'll be able to take this bottom piece off and you won't have this trouble. But it's right here and there is a release button, just like the top ones, there's a release button right here that you release. Gotta feel it, because I can't see it. Release and pull. Push, yeah, push up from the bottom and then it pulls out. And then that should free the unit to come on out. Come on out of the dog. Yeah, it was twisting it around and around and around stuff. So there's the gross old one. Let's look at the good, pretty looking new one. We just got a Duralast. This is from. AutoZone. I'm sure you can get them from other places, Amazon, different places, but we needed it today. So here we go. You've got a little, you've got a little bracket right here, and you got a bracket on this. Those need to line up, and then you've got this bracket here that lines up with this hole here. So let's get them lined up. Get the cords out from underneath them. There we go, and then we'll just uh, start in the reverse order. We're going to put that screw in back in right over here and start plugging everything back in. All right, once you have your 5.5 millimeter screw screwed in on the top. And so it's in the space then we're going to we want to make sure you get these plugged in and there again they only go in one way so just turn them until you get them in and I want to show you you want to make sure they snap okay hear that nice solid click and then there's the one more down here that you want to make sure it clips in as well same thing and then before we get all these pieces back on we're going to crank it and make sure that the blinkers do work. All right, before you put all your panels back on, you want to make sure it works. And uh, so first thing you're going to do is plug up your battery, uh, screw your battery back on. And if it's an old one like ours, you may want to do some cleanup on the corrosion and put some grease on it to keep it from having trouble. Then we're going to check and see if all of these work. So we've got um, blinker. Left blinker, right blinker, hazards, and what else? Let's see, brights. Let's turn the lights on and bright. Hey, looks like it works. So now let's get the panels back on. All right, so this piece here, you have to thread it in over this handle and then work it around behind here this may be one of the hardest pieces to get on I'm not the, the bottom one may be a little difficult too but so pretty hard to get on I had to twist the steering wheel to get it to fit behind there and get it lined up but if you were able to move your steering wheel that should help you some and then there are two bolts under here one here and then one on the back side here that get that hold it in place 
and they're decently long screws. Now this one just has the clips on it, but we have to attach this first, which is just a matter of getting your hand in the right spot. There is a little, a little nub like this that sticks down. I'm just gonna click it, clip it underneath that nub. It's in. And then these are going to snap down. And once we get the bottom piece in place, it will be attached as well. So now we need to move under here. And this may be a little challenging to get this lined up and uh, lined up here. And then we'll have one, one screw under here that we'll need to attach. So we need to come this direction. Yeah, do a little movement. Pop that one out. And them up. Click this side in place. Click this side in place. <laughs> and set the uh, flashers going. And then we're ready to put the screw right up in here where we took it out of. And come up over here with the camera, if you will, Denise. See this piece right here. This is a little bit of, it's not terribly difficult. You just have to remember that this feeds on the outside and on the inside. So you want to align that. Otherwise, you'll end up with it half in and half out. And it just makes it smoother and neater for your total viewing pleasure there. All right. Put this screw in and then we'll work on this bottom panel. I'll have to get out and climb up underneath there to do that. All right, so this uh, was not terribly difficult, and then screwing this, there was just the one little bitty short screw, screwing back in here, and then you can see there are clip spots on here, and corresponding clips here, so we're just gonna line those clips up. Snap, how easy. And then down here, we're going to put our screws in these holes that hold this into place. And once we've got that in place, we should be in good shape. And they'll have their truck back in good shape so they can go to work. All right, we got the last panel on, screwed in. Everything's good to go. This work truck is ready to go back to work. Thanks for joining us for another episode of South Alabama Gals.